the Queen! God save the Queen, and welcome back to an episode of Victoria Too Hard of Darkness, the Canadian Let's Play, where last episode, as you guys know, we took another piece of the Chinese Empire, where now we basically have a land, a land title to just dividing China. We just severely divided China into two little kingdoms, where if we want to, want to, we could probably take them all over in a couple seconds. So, um, what we're going to do now, since we now have this, is we're basically going to make some railroads. Because we want to make sure that our people can travel around safely. And we want to make sure our armies can travel around safety. Because, you know, just not being able to travel is just stinks. And we got to make sure we avoid the nasty Russian land over there. The nasty Chinese Russian land. Which, at some point, I really am going to take over. Um, I don't know exactly when, but they are definitely on my hit list. Because that is, that de facto lead belongs to the Chinese em Emperor. Um, I don't know his name yet. We haven't really decided on who the Chinese, or I mean who the Canadianese em Emperor is. Or who the guy who's leading this in. And we got some iron, I didn't even realize that. That is awesome, okay. And there we go. And so, um, what else I'm going to try to do this episode is... Try to look through all my factories, and to be honest with you, like I said, we really need to start increasing our um, um, craftsmen, because right now we have a population that's just not going to quit. And so what we really need now at this point is just massive, massive amounts of immigrants and um, attracting, attracting, okay, yeah, just get off to your wine island, seriously. We don't need a wine island, yeah. Okay, we just need massive, massive amounts of um, new... Um, stuff so what we're going to be doing is just like increasing it so our distill factory is pretty good let's raise our expand our lumber f not lumber factory our canned food factory all right so yeah i'm trying to make sure i get this more concisely about what i say so you guys understand me um we are not being anywhere near the maximum fuel amount fuel refiner i wasn't really trying to anyway so you know it's no biggie um, are we anywhere in electrical gears? We are a little bit into electrical gears. We should probably jump on that really quick before it becomes too much. Telephones and automobiles, still no one has invented those. That's good. So we still have a chance to be number one in that. Alright, so let's just now just chill back and just wait for the infamy. And apparently I'm over my, uh, colonial limit. Because apparently my colonial power has dropped severe, significantly. Um... I'm kind of wondering, like, what happens when this happens? Do you just, like, continue on playing, or... I don't know, like, this is the first time... Egyptian 2 discovered, and we just got some more prestige and some more research. That is awesome, okay. Well, that just got me on my train of thought, but... Yeah, I don't know what we would do with this prestige. It's just like, what? What What do we do? What do we do with this? I, I don't know, but... We're gonna think about it at Canadians. And we just got a consensus colonial thing. Um, hopefully that's not going to make everyone start saying, Yeah, you guys should start freeing everyone. No. No. We are not. I may have been nice to just a couple of my colonial allies, but I'm really just kind of chilling out right now. As after I've taken over more and more of China, and I feel so great right now, like, there is just... I should probably start... Being which I should probably start like moving my armies around so I'm gonna move this army right over here move this army right over here and then just keep these three armies over there that way we have a good gigantic consensus about where we have to go and where we have to be and oh my goodness this is like so awesome and we can enact some more reforms not any of the reforms I really want to two-party system is definitely what I still want to keep with still a lot of okay voting right movements minimum campaign Minimum wage campaign. I mean, these are all good things. I don't really consider... Okay, what? Okay, that could be a definite problem. Right there, the 2.05 million Canadian people. Um... What do you guys want? Okay. Um, you guys are obviously minimum wage. Describes me. Right, I'm gonna try this. What happened if I camp for safety conditions? Uh, I'm just going to suppress the safety conditions and see what happens. Let's see if that's going to come back and bite me in the buttocks. And we have tractors. Yay! Uh, people are becoming more and more, like I said, I described in the last episode, we become more and more like Farmer Hicks. And I can just imagine us, like, just slowly but surely becoming that, like, idealism of what... I can imagine since Canada is now, like, this big, gigantic, like, powerhouse of a nation, I mean... 
We are not just a nation that sits on top of America. We are legitly a nation that should be feared. And since we are legitly a nation that should be feared, we should probably start building up a lot of our forts on the border. That way, we don't have to constantly be in fear of the United States' power. So I just realized that we are in constant fear of the United States declaring war on us. But if maybe if we like increase our like fort levels on the border, maybe, just maybe, we could fight against the United States. It's a slim hope, though, because the United States has, like, the third biggest military in the world, and... <laughs> Canada's doing fairly well in militaristic power, so... It's gonna be a pretty hard war if we actually did go... If we actually did somehow, you know, end up on a war against the American front. And I'm not even gonna work on this part, because I probably would just let it get conquered. This is the part that really matters, and I finally got these soldiers, so I'm gonna go start sending them over. In fact, I got a lot more soldiers now, so I'm just gonna send them all over, over there. Anyone over here? Yeah, we got some, a little bit of, uh, engineer. The engineer, the engineer of, what's this region called? Um, Cape Brenton Island. The Cape of Brenton Island engineer. The first one of its kind. You must feel very proud, man. You come from a little tiny... A little tiny like place and you're about to serve in the big um, gigantic Canadian army we salute you sir all right and more stuff with the Americans definitely not wanting to give up their uh, Queen's eye or whatever this little part of China they definitely don't want to give up this little part which is kind of annoying me I'm not gonna deny that both me and the Chinese way I'm actually gaining a footing on here so I'm gonna see what I can do can I expel the advisors? Can I expel... Um, no, I cannot, because I actually don't have enough influence. Ah, uh, dang it. Um, okay, the membership in the International Olympic Committee. The combination of renewed interest in ancient Greek civilization and the idea of sports as an in important part of social development has led a French aristocrat, B Baron Pierre de Coubertin, uh, no, Coubertin, Coubertin, I think it is. No, I'm, I'm pronouncing that one wrong. To propose reviving the Olympic Games as a way to promote international peace through friendly athletic competition between nations. Should our nation join this International Olympic Committee to organize the first games? You know, this is always a great event no matter what you do because it always will get you great relationships with everyone. So, an excellent idea we shall accept every time. So, oh no. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Dang it, I would have done that if I actually had that a little bit quicker. Alright, so China's definitely having more and more difficulties. Um, I'm kind of scared of Russia just taking more land now that I think about it. Okay, and now since we have a little bit of a break, we definitely do need this stupid sulfide. Okay. Um, you know what I might do is I might conquer this region right here, Yexing, uh, Xiying, and just take the sulfide deposits there. Because that's really... Um, well, my administration levels in Asia, I knew were not great, so I wasn't even going to try for that, but, um, what I might do is go take the, uh, little bit of sulfide, wait, where is it, little bit of sulfide right over here, because that might help our nation out a lot, because I don't really have, there aren't really that many, many places with sulfide, I mean, I do have a couple sphere nations that have sulfide, but, oh wait, no I don't, Chile's not actually a part of my nation, okay, Chile, you are now going to be a part of my nation because I need that, and, um, over here, Ecuador is not part of my nation. Let's make Ecuador part of my nation. Because, why not? Let's make the Equatorians make our nation. And, as you can see, Panama is, you know, being prosperously happy now that it has the Panama, or uh, the Panama Canal underneath their control. I mean, they must be really happy. I mean, they don't actually have Panama City, but they had the Panama Canal, which, arguably, I think was way, way worth it. I mean, a city's great, but it costs you taxes, and it costs you, like, civilian uprest and then you have to give them health care and then you have to do all that jazz but I mean with the canal all you have to do is just let ships come in and out and you know do it with some repairs but you just get instant money from it which then from that army you can use it to buy mercs and build an army which then you could use to go take over more land I don't know a, a canal sounds a canal to me would sound much better than almost anything and um anything else we might need you know what? actually I will get this because we I have a feeling if there's a rebellion that breaks out right now with the stupid communists who I don't even get why they're even gonna try to like hate me because I'm actually a very very nice person in this a semi I should say semi nice um I just I, I don't get why they're hating me right now 
Because I'm just, I'm a socialist. I, I should already be liked by them. It should be already like, oh yeah, you're a socialist. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not like a communist, but it's basically about the same. I mean, we do believe in slightly different things, but I mean, it's basically the same. So why are we hitting each other? I don't know. I don't know. So apparently these two regions are not actually connected. That may be resolved in just a little bit, but you never know. And yeah. Um, China's, China's just in chaos now that its empire is divided. I'm betting, what I have a feeling is that China has most of its soldiers down here. And all of the, I killed off all the soldiers up here. And so they're just all going to be revolutionized. And the Chinese are probably going to become communist by the looks of it. And I got expelled from here again. So are the Japanese still fighting for this region? Because that's basically, no they aren't. And the Americans still fighting me for this region. Great. That is not helping me at all. So I'm just going to have to wait here and just whack down infamy. That's basically all I have to do. Revolution in the Chinese Empire. Just exactly what I just said. But it seems like the revolution actually hasn't ended. It seems like they're still going through the revolution. They still have a lot more to go. And did was there a war going on here? No. No wars. No nothing. What is going on? Okay. I don't even know what went on. But apparently the British just acquired something. And I have an influence in Ecuador. So Ecuador is, I guess, being ripped out of the American sphere because the Americans don't want him? No, I'm still, I'm still just working my way up to that point. And let's see, do we have all of our infrastructure upgraded to the maximum ability? No, we don't. Upgrade. Upgrade infrastructure. This infrastructure is very important in this. Okay. And honestly, infrastructure really does help us out. Helps keep us very much in tune to what's happening with our country. Now that I'm actually, like, caring about infrastructure and stuff, since I have, like, look at this, I'm, like, gaining 3.79, like, army tech. I mean, we are, we are rolling in dough right now. This is more money than I was actually making them in my, um, in my French campaign. In my French campaign, I was making barely, I think, a thousand dollars, though, then again, I was, like, being a tyrannical leader, and I didn't have, like, 44.32 male population, which... Pretty much, what is our total population now? Do we have a hundred thousand? Oh, we have more than a hundred million people in our population in total. That is awesome. So we are definitely expanding that, and our transcontinental railroad is now becoming our transcontinental everywhere railroad, which has honestly been one of the awesomest things that I could have learned about in Canada was that they built the first transcontinental railroad. A little bit of history for you there, everyone, folks. A little bit of history. Wait, and don't try to quote me on that either. Because, I don't know. I'm kind of now thinking maybe I was wrong. Maybe the Americans did build it first. Because we built everything first. Um, uh, or we take credit for most things that build first. So now I'm starting to like doubt myself. And no, no. You know, use that on your test, people. When, you guys go, when we all go back to school in, um, in early summer or late summer, use that on the test. The railroads in Canada were built before the railroads in America. That is what I'm sticking with. That is my final answer. Let's see if I won a prize for that. Buzzing in. Okay. Now let's continue with our building of the railroads in, in here. And it seems like I almost got a couple more places built. And let's see, do I got some more? Yeah, it seems like our um, expansion over here is also almost done. And you know, I honestly should worry about a relations... I don't know. I don't think the... Uh, um, Russians are going to be quite brave or quite willing to go to war with me right now. Though I'm not sure, I still have like one of the weakest armies and I'm still not even in 8th power in terms of almost anything. In terms of industrial power, I'm still not even there. I'm trying to get there, but I'm still not even there. It's probably... Okay, let's increase that. Upper house, okay. Okay, yeah, I have 3,000. I really gotta start spending more of this. Okay, so we got like 11,000 here. This will probably be picked up by that, but what we can do is we can start like... Getting more electrical gears, more electrical gears in this country. Um, over here in Ontario, we can build a winery, distillery. We need to start building up because this is basically we're building up our economy from the ground under. Okay, we have. I just build a grass factory. It always makes money. Okay. Um, over here, yeah, we're already dealing with this problem. Okay. Over here in, in the refinery business, what we're going to do is also. Alaska is also going to be our place for for producing machine parts. 
and that should that should honestly like drag people over there to Alaska because if you actually have a factory building I think it actually increases the amount of workers and that actually helps us a lot so let's see Yucatan places now the rest of the places are just great so yep that's all we need to do in that place uh, the war between Austria Hungary and Romania a quite intense war Chile is having difficulties uh, I expected one of my son. No, they're actually not. What are you talking about? Chile is not having difficulties. Yeah, Chile is not having difficulties. They actually, if there was difficulties, they actually dealt with it. Which is surprising. And really, I am really getting shocked that I'm not changing any of my classes right now. I really wish I would because we have severe rebel problems coming in at a lot. It's probably because of my high taxes. I'm not going to deny um, yeah, it probably is because of my high taxes, so, we're switching to commun- I, No, I think I tried this with my other Let's Play. It does not switch to Parliament if I switch to Communism. They want flu- I don't know, I guess they want to completely own everything. I guess that's what the Communism they get, which doesn't make- Now, this legit- uh, I know a lot- I know I say this a lot, but a lot of things don't make sense in this game, but I think this really does not make sense. I switched to a Communist government, and I still have Communist people trying to take over. It's like, uh, dude- uh, we're already communist. What did? Yeah, you know we're communists, right? We're, we're not. We're not like capitalists. We we actually believe in what you guys believe. So why are you guys still trying to go take over the government and trying to rebel and you know just trying to mess up my nation? It doesn't make. It that does not make any sense. All right. So now we got more Canadian Canadian stuff going on. Um, I think we should probably be able to finish this army now. I've, I've given enough time for the troops to be here. Um, yeah, now we can build six of these, which is what we need. Okay, yeah. And we, we should also just start, like, building massive amounts of army hordes inside the Chinese, because this is really where the power is. Like, if, if we were really talking about where power is, this is where the power is. And how are our relationship with Russia? It's almost 100. Let's make sure that Russia has no reason to go war with us forever and ever and ever, because I really don't want to fight a war with Russia. America might... Ah, no. <laughs> and the, the Jacobsons, or the Jacobsons, or whatever you want to call them, and America hates me. How the British like me? The British still love me. America hates me, though. Luckily, they don't have a constant belly against me. Otherwise, I'd probably be doomed right now. Okay, so, go deal with them. You know, I really wish Panama feels... Panama is my own ally. Why would I attack them? Like, legitimately, I released them. That was a, I released them so they could be their own sovereign nation. Why would I attack you, Panama? What? What? It doesn't make any sense. Electrical lighting, that's good, that's good. We're always getting more electrical lighting. Okay, so obviously people are either stressed that I'm taxing them so much or other stuff that's stupid. Okay, they aren't going to control the capital, so that's really good. So we don't really have to worry too much. Um, I'll build some more things over here. Let's build an airplane factory over uh, already so that way we can be in technological advancement times and you know what we have to build a lumber factory because you know what we we export just a lot of lumber and we need to start using that to our advantage which we do I think we yeah, would like the m maximum amount of exporter in lumber which is good it's always good to know that but okay who the heck is rebelling Chile and Ecuador okay Ecuador has no rebels and neither this Chile. I, I don't know what this is talking about, but there are no rebels in these countries. Ah. Stupid broken system. Okay. Okay, we have all these. Stockpile T or make all capitalists. Make all capitalists pay. I like that. Because I don't really care about capitalists anymore. So, you know. Yeah, that, that makes me very happy that I make all capitalists pay. Okay, so we now we have all these other countries just messing me over. I'm just like chilling out there just like thinking what what's going on okay we have basically like we have bit seems like we'll eventually just gain control over that let me make sure they're not conquering oh shoot okay you quickly go yeah you quickly go back to our capital oh shoot okay so we might become communist and if you guys remember there's a rule I've made in this game and I don't know and I've honestly never rebuked it is is that if this okay and I better describe it now if another government takes over from here then I'm basically out of the game okay but if it does not give me enough time to conquer back my region 
Like, cause now we're in a bad state because now our capital is bad is in is in conquered mode. But um, they have to give me enough time. Like, they don't give me a year amount of time to con we conquer my region. Then I don't think I don't think it's worth it. But if we do not get we gain control of our capital within a year, then this could be a bad decision. So I'll leave it right here in this suspenseful moment of shoot. This might end up badly, and this a campaign might be cut short because of my stupidity um, or stupid moves. That's a better word for it. So, Mwah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.